over the years, you see me go from super bulk all the way down to single digit body fat. And what's interesting is that throughout all these bulks and cuts, not once have I failed. My track record, which is all documented over the last nine years, has proven to be 100% successful. And it will always be this way in the long term because I know what I'm doing. I've listened to others who are more experienced than me and apply their knowledge and the results speak for themselves. So in this video, I'm going to share seven important lessons that will help you get lean once and for all. The real deal, no nonsense. This is what works for naturals. My first basic tip is to have an end destination in mind. You must have a goal weight. You must have a scale. You need to track your food. You need to track your body weight every single day. This is an exact science. Once you know what your total daily energy expenditure is and you enter that calorie deficit, this is what it's always been about. Seco is number one. Don't let the marketing guru frauds tell you otherwise. If you're eating less than what is required to sustain your weight, you will go down. Track your values. See how that weight fluctuates throughout the weeks. Sure, when you first begin to cut, there will be this massive reduction. That's the water weight coming down. You're deep bloated. You look a lot better. And you might think that there's only a little bit left to go for your cut to be over. Another month or two? Usually no, but... I'll get more on that later, but the thing is, after that initial effect, if your body weight is not changing on a week-to-week -week basis, then don't think there's somehow going to be this other whoosh randomly coming in. You have already failed. And this subjective perception of, oh, I look drier. Oh, I look grainier. Oh, I look more toned. I'm more ripped. I mean, you very well could be, but what if I told you you're actually gaining weight while retaining all those values? And it's only gonna be after a few weeks where you were 100% of dark, where now all of a sudden you put back on some fat. What happened? You didn't track. You need to wear yourself in the morning, every day, next seven days. See if the final value changed. If it didn't, you lower those calories a bit more. Maybe drop it by 100 calories or so. Because the more fit you get with your cardio, for example, that can have an effect on your NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And your body will find ways to regulate. It makes it harder to lose weight as you go on. So know where you stand. Always be rational. Logic above perceptions of feeling leaner, even if... That's 100% factual. And then with the goal, recognize that most of you are carrying a tremendous amount of fat, far more than you can possibly realize. So when I hear people saying, oh, I'm going to be 200 pounds ripped, or at least be in the 180s or 190s shredded or 10% body fat, I don't want to be a buck 50 or buck 60 or even 170 like those skinny guys. No. I want to be heavy and lean. Yeah, good luck with that for 90% of you. Unless you're an elite natural who is on the taller side, which if you're above average, you're already above the norm. Chances are your height in centimeters is going to be your weight in pounds when you're about 12% body fat or so. And then if you want to get the single digit body fat percentage, try another 20 pounds less. I know that sounds extreme, but it's the truth. And you're looking at someone who actually did it. Like I can show you pictures of me at 181 pounds, stacked, still looking lean. Probably leaner than most people who watch YouTube Fitness. Abs are there, right? Bicep vein, back definition, all is beautiful. That kind of physique right there easily has another 30 pounds more to lose. And in a competitive bodybuilding environment, if you want to win first place, be the most shredded guy on stage, 
China to 10 pounds. So a total of 40 pounds lost from a decently lean state just to reveal everything. And that's coming from a guy who has a lot of muscle, who's been in this game for a long time. So whatever your goal weight is, first of all, have one. This is essential. And then go beyond. You probably have to lose double is what I'm saying, or at least 1.5 times. You think you got to lose 20 pounds? Try 40. You think you're 20% body fat? You're probably a 30% body fat. You think you're 10% body fat? You're probably 15% body fat. And it's very rare to see someone who is actually shredded. Like, if you never had striations in all of your delts, feathers in the quads, even the glutes, which is the final destination, then don't tell me you're shredded. You're not. And then the other thing is that you have to overshoot your goal because when you start eating at maintenance or a slight caloric surplus, there's going to be that water weight that comes back on and you'll naturally regain a couple of pounds of actual fat. You have to do this or else you're just going to feel like garbage. So even if your goal was to weigh, say, 170 pounds, get down to 160. I'm going to recommend 10 pounds below than what you think is the correct goal. All right, so track your body weight, track your food, and then have a weight goal that is almost unrealistically low. And stick to it for the next three months, which brings me on to my next tip. It is highly recommended to include diet breaks. Trust me, as someone who dieted for six months straight, I can tell you that this almost ruined my life. Not only will diet fatigue be at an all-time high, you're so fed up of doing it. Your willpower is down in the gutter. You don't want to do this anymore. It also increases the chances of regaining a tremendous amount of fat the moment that cut is done. You're going to be so mentally and physically exhausted that you are going to binge your life away. And it is not uncommon to gain 15 pounds a month after, say, a bodybuilding competition or reaching your goal. So if you don't want to regain the fat, first and foremost, take a break in between. Prove to yourself that you're even capable of maintaining that. See if it's sustainable for you. And if you notice that, hey, this is fine. I'm chilling at this body weight. Let's freaking keep going. Great. That's not your set point. So I recommend having a two to four week diet break, which is especially important if you want to step on stage. And that's why bodybuilders will advise being overly prepared, as in you're somewhat lean a couple months before the competition, rather than being at this incredibly bulked up weight and then you got a stress cut. Really drop those calories low and now you lose more muscle mass. So although it could be tempting to do it one shot, you just want to get it over with. Know that this is actually hard mode and it has a higher failure rate, not only for regaining, but even finishing. Like, I'm a guy who is absolutely obsessed with fulfilling my potential. I live this lifestyle. I work from home. I have a home gym. I make fitness videos for you guys. I train a lot. I research a lot. Fitness is a significant part of my life. And even I had trouble in those last two months because I did it straight, one shot, boom. I will not do that again. So every three months, little break. It's going to lower your cortisol, give you a breather, refresh you. Now your battery is back at 100%. And those next three months will feel like the first three months rather than being proportionally way harder. So do yourself a favor. If you are not morbidly obese or below max rather, one mini cut is probably all you're going to need. And this concept can be compared to strength training. Sometimes you have to take a deload. Moving a couple steps back. And then you can jump more steps forward. This is the way. Next, I want to talk about the sacrifice of cutting. Mostly being losing strength. Guys, it is what it is. And unless you're a complete novice, 
if you are in a calorie deficit for months at a time, I would say there is a 9 out of 10 chance of losing a good amount of strength, which could be easily 50 pounds off your bench press one rep max. Sorry. I wish I could tell you that you'll maintain everything, but some exercises are leverage dependent, which is mostly going to be your pushing compounds, being bench press and squats. Deadlift is actually the least impacted by this. Hence, we tend to see the craziest pound for pound ratios, whether it's conventional or sumo. But whenever you have something that can reduce range of motion through having a power belly, or more thickness in your upper back, or more cushion that is compacting you, you're like a human spring, that will make you weaker. And it's not necessarily that you're losing a lot of muscle mass, it's your form being somewhat different, compounded with the depletion. And you're not recovering as well, not to mention the cortisol being sky high, fatigue being greater, lower work capacity, the calorie deficit itself being catabolic. So it's perfectly normal to lose a rep or two on a week to week basis, or at best maintain. But don't think you're gonna go from one weight class, and I use that term not in a competitive sense, but just to compare. Don't think you're gonna go from 181 to 165 and retain all the numbers. It's not gonna happen. And then if you try to get to a shredded status, even worse, your muscles are flat like a pancake, you're looking smaller, and it's, it's only a couple weeks after being in that state, eating like a normal human being should, that you'll see those muscles balloon up and all those PRs starting to return. And that's the good news in all this. I'm not trying to discourage you because the truth of the matter is that everything I just said, as negative as it may sound, isn't a big deal. For one simple reason, you will regain about 90% of your strength within the next two months after resuming a normal eating schedule. In other words, this is purely temporary, which makes me ask you a very simple question. Who cares if you're losing strength? Accept it, it's a temporary sacrifice. Don't quit your cut, persevere, go to the end, understand that it's just a part of the process and that's gonna help you cope with the pain of being smaller and being weaker because I understand that it sucks balls. You balked for the entire year or years. Maybe you were a prone balker. You maybe went from being an elite lifter or an advanced lifter down to intermediate status. All that hard work down the drain, not understanding that the pipes are clogged that water is gonna resurface. I want you to know that everything's going to be okay. Stay on course and recognize that it's not for all your muscles. Some areas might retain most of their performance. Actually, in a calisthenics context, you might even get stronger. Display the gains from the bulk because you were too fat to properly display these relative strength gains. Maybe you could do one-arm pull-ups now. Maybe you could do front levers, all this beautiful skill work. You know, your endurance is going to go up. You're going to feel better. There's other benefits beyond just having the best absolute strength. And like I said, it's all going to come back. Mark my words on that. The only thing that's going to screw you over is if you get demotivated and then get fat again, or you're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to double down. If I'm going to lose all the strength anyway, fuck it. let's do a crash diet, get shredded in a month rather than three months. And now that muscle, which you should have kept because you didn't really lose muscle per se. Now you're not going to get it back in two months. But if you do it the slow and steady, painful, a hundred percent temporary way, my man, you have nothing to worry about. So don't listen to the naysayers. Just do what you got to do. It's just a matter of time. This cut that you're going through right now, is nothing compared to the long-term journey. And you see me go through this over the years, I always come back bigger and better. Not to mention the fact that if you compare your strength loss compared to previous cuts, 
you'll notice that even though there is a loss, the base point is still higher. So if your rep work on the bench went from 225 to say 185 last year, so that's one thing you could expect as well. Yes, it's going to be strength loss, but each time you bulk and cut, the proportions scale differently. Next, I want to cover cardio and what it could really do for you. Hint, it's not the secret to getting lean or hitting single digit body fat. Diet is the way. In fact, when I got to 8%, towards the end, I wasn't doing any cardio. Not only did I not have the energy for it, though that's probably an excuse, I found that as long as my diet was perfect, which it was, I continuously dropped body fat week after week. Now the cardio would have surely given me more wiggle room by maybe a couple hundred more calories throughout the week. And that could have made a difference in feeling better. And that's why I will recommend that 100% of every human being on planet Earth does cardio for their health and well-being. You should do it. It might even be more important than weights in some circumstances. And my tip is actually to do your freaking cardio, but not for fat loss. I need to get that straight. And the mistake that I often see is guys doing way too much cardio than what is required, trying to outwork their diet, which is possible as seen by marathon runners. But the problem is it's a compensation strategy that doesn't give you the best return on your investment. You are spending so many hours a week pedaling away, jogging away, doing thousands of burpees. Like I do that as well, but I'm not a nut job. I'm not an endurance athlete. I do cardio for my health and most importantly, the work capacity. That is the secret. That is the reason why every lifter needs to do their cardio, especially when they're trying to get lean. Because in a calorie deficit, you're going to feel like garbage. You are not on PEDs. Your strength is going down, as I explained earlier. And you cannot handle the same amount of volume and intensity. Everything fatigues you that much more. In fact, when I'm really low in body fat, after dieting for months, I found that I can't do three sets of an exercise. Two is basically the most that I can do at a rather high RPE. And in general, I gotta cut things back. I can't specialize and certain exercises beat me down to the ground, like stimulus to fatigue, which is already the most important, needs to be freaking perfected. So you cannot afford to mess up your exercise selection because your recovery is so limited right now, even when you're sleeping properly and doing everything correctly with nutrition. And so where cardio comes in is that it is the one thing that can actually go up tremendously. Like your endurance can go through the roof while making you feel better living through life. Work capacity is the missing link for so many guys. And when we talk about being the bulk status, usually guys will skip out their cardio but they can still complete the workout because they got all this reserve of mass and the calorie surplus. They are anabolic AF. So even if their workout takes double the time, they're resting five minutes between sets, like we see with a lot of fat power lifters, they're gonna complete that workout and there's gonna be PRs on everything. It's gonna be perfect. Like, all I'm saying is it takes them more time. But with you, even trying to take your time, you can't do it. Not unless you have the work capacity, which cardio is the best way of maximizing. And so that's why you should do it. Next, let's talk about nutrition. I strongly recommend staying away from bro bodybuilder diets where you're consuming nothing but bland, lifeless foods that are rather low in micronutrients because that is a one-way ticket to low testosterone and feeling depressed out of your mind to the point where you might have dark thoughts and quit your diet, never even attempt to get shredded ever again, or even lean. You might be like, I am done. I'm just gonna be a permabulker moving forward. The reason these guys get away with it, first of all, they're already wired different from you and me. They're on a whole different level of crazy. But the major reason, this is number one, is the fact that they simply re-inject what their body would naturally lose. So they don't care if the nutrition is subpar. 
which is going to negatively impact their blood markers for one and also their testosterone levels because they don't care about health to begin with they've already accepted the dark side and yes it is the dark side let's stop defending these guys what they do is not healthy professional bodybuilding is not healthy and either i'm going to argue that natural bodybuilding is healthy either when you get down to an absurdly low body fat but is it better than doing it the enhanced way i think we can argue yes so if you have someone who's recommending white rice and tilapia with plain chicken breasts and a very small amount of vegetables usually it's going to be broccoli which is actually an excellent food but if it's just plain foods that are not high in micronutrients at least when we analyze the micros compared to the macros calorie wise so the percentage of the micros that you get from this rather low volume of food that equates to a large amount of calories in one sitting or throughout the course of many meals if that makes sense if the micros are not proportional to the calories which is the case for most of these pro bodybuilders specifically and you try copying that bro prepare for a living nightmare do yourself a favor and buy some cookbooks i don't care who it's from but recipes that keep you sane will allow you to get shredded you're also going to enjoy eating your food it's going to taste great and you're not going to crash your tea levels down to the depths of hell because you will be in hell nothing but misery awaits for you if you try copying some of these pros so the best thing i'm ever going to tell you and you need to memorize this phrase and i'm not the one who invented it right this is from dr Furman, who you all need to check out what you want is moderate caloric restriction in an environment of micronutrient excellence write that down say it out loud over and over again and embody it because not only will you be way more full for the volume of food that's being consumed but all your health markers are going to be better you're not going to be deficient in anything your blood pressure is going to be normalized you'll have way more energy more antioxidants better recovery probably going to age backwards as well you have better sleep which a lot of us really struggle when dieting for long enough better testosterone levels because you haven't dropped your fat intake to zero you might be in the 15 20 percent zone or lowest 10 but you're, you're eating whole nuts and seeds chia seeds flax seeds a bit of walnuts maybe a little bit of olive oil like yeah the oil is empty calories but that's a small amount of those model unsaturated fats might be good for your dick when you're at a low body fat it might be good for your sex drive it might be good for making you feel just a little bit more oomph and then the micros they're not just hitting your rda you're gonna be like 300 to 500 percent over that amount when you're eating a tremendous amount of anti-cancer foods this is why you need to eat your vegetables i'm not gonna dive into this too much because that's not what i want this video to be about but I can point you out to guys who are promoters of plant-based nutrition. And again, I'm not telling you to become a vegan, but adopt some of those practices into your diet. And you're going to see very clearly that your micros are infinitely superior to what you've done before. So don't just concern yourself with the protein, bro. Don't just have a select few sources like lean chicken breast and tilapia. Include a bit of beans. Have your mushrooms, have your seeds. Have your dark leafy greens, have your berries, have foods that long living people who don't consume a lot of calories eat. It's going to make a world difference in how you feel. Next, I want to mention one more thing about diet, which is adding in cheap meals. Most of you do this. I understand in a perfect world, we would all be strict from start to finish, but that's not reality. You need that psychological break with reward. It feels good after a hard week of being on point to have that one cheat meal just to keep you sane and happy physically and mentally but that's the thing it's supposed to be singular as in not turning this into a cheat day a cheat weekend or worse a cheat week allow yourself one cheat meal Per week 
at a maximum. And the leaner you get, the more you'll have to cut these out while being more mindful of what the cheat meal entails. In other words, don't let your discipline go from a 10 all the way down to one. Maintain at least four or five. Have some accountability. Don't be a pig who is eating whatever is in sight. That also includes the cheap meal itself. It doesn't have to be the most extreme calorically dense of which you're able to muster up in one sitting. Heck, you can even modify the cheat meal to make it slightly more clean such that the weekly net deficit, which is how you actually get lean, is still reasonable. Because I agree, you're not going to get fat off one cheat meal, but it does slow down the process, thereby leading to weeks more pain of being in this deficit, not to mention making it significantly harder to stay through with it because you've now strengthened the neural pathways associated with improper eating. The more cheat meals you have, the more you're going to crave it. And the crazier you go, the more you open up that appetite. Notice how a few days after, especially on a holiday, you want to eat more. It's slightly harder to stick to your diet. Well, if you're not a hard gainer, or you've been bare mode your whole life, relatively fluffy, rather. What do you think that's going to do to you? All you've done is put additional pressure on you, which if you're able to resist, congratulations, more power to you. But unfortunately, I'm not so trusting of most people who are trying to diet because 90% of dieters fail. And there's a reason why the weight loss industry is so big. When you allow flexibility for something that you know is wrong it leads to errors and that's why you need to keep the cheating at a bare minimum and be selective with your choices you're still enjoying your life it still beats the daily diet let's keep it real for example if i'm really hungry i can probably eat an entire extra large pizza to myself but i will have to force feed towards the end so it's not really enjoyable and in the event where i cannot finish Maybe because I've been dieting for so long, my stomach has shrank. I don't have the same appetite as I did when heavier. Well, guess what? You now have leftovers, which is never a good idea for cheat meals. This is also what screws over people during holidays. It's not necessarily that one cheat meal, as I discussed earlier. And so if I'm being smart, I'm either going to go with a large or a medium. Even if I'm not... 100% full. I might be 90% of the way there, but it was still good. And of the flavors available, I'm not going to request extra toppings or go for the maxed out cheese option because that's what tends to ruin you the most. And so when you go to a restaurant, when you order out, many times you will see the calories being listed or at least have somewhat of an estimation. Be mindful of that and weigh out your options because if you can avoid consuming hundreds of calories, that's a good thing. Isn't that equivalent to hitting some cardio, which you now don't have to do? And then when we compare some cheat meals to others, in my case, if I'm not in a maintenance phase, I probably won't even have pizza simply because it has too many calories. I would rather choose sushi, which is still dense, but for my appetite, I'm going to be way more full while having hundreds of calories less. So just like before, we talked about micronutrient excellence. Here, you're not really getting micros because you're eating junk food, but some cheat meals will give you the same level of happiness and fullness, but the calories can vary drastically. Favor those that are slightly lower and your diet's gonna be more successful as a whole. But anyway, you can still live your life and you should still show up to your family gatherings, spending time with those you love who are important to you. Don't be that douche who's bringing Tupperwares to a big dinner. And if you know it's going to be a massive feast, I'd actually recommend keeping it as your only meal. Fast throughout the entire day, or at least have a very small breakfast, oatmeal and some berries, and you're done. Two meals tops if a big calorie deficit is guaranteed. Certainly don't eat after that point. 
And if there's a lot of leftovers, you don't have to be the one to finish them. Lastly, I want to end off this video with a warning. Beware of how high you set your expectations. For if you actually achieve that goal, it might give you permanent body dysmorphia. Or if it doesn't, you're still going to be comparing yourself to that legendary physique that you know was unsustainable. And as someone who's been single digit, I have to admit that unfortunately, I now suffer from this problem. In a way, you can call it a mistake, but also good knowing that I gave it my all. But guys, you never forget. You remember how good you looked. It's burned in your brain. Because even when you reach a lean, healthy body fat, say being 12%, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, hmm, I'm not that far off from 10. It's just a couple of weeks of dieting. Then single digit, why not? I mean, it's literally the end stage. Sure, it's the hardest part. This is where the most discipline is required. But you know it's within reach. It's so close. This is the low hanging fruit. Not understanding that there's worms in there. You ain't gonna feel good after you take a bite out of it. So temptation is always there, which could be destructive to your mental health. Because if you try to go through a bulk, you might hit a body fat that originally was not a problem. But now you're looking at yourself as if you're fat. And maybe you needed to hit this normal body fat to continue elevating your gains. And as someone who was making some of the best gains of my life this year, progress never stopped. I was getting bigger, stronger, like progress that I hadn't seen in a long time. Not a single plateau in sight. Perfect 10 on 10. You couldn't have asked for a better situation. And I was actually leaner than my previous bulk, despite being heavier. Mentally, I couldn't do it. I was like, I can't. <laughs> I gotta be lean again. And right now, I'm at the perfect body weight for me. This is probably why I should be for the rest of my life. But I'm like, no. Let's die down another 20 pounds. That's what happens when you go a bit too extreme. It could be a double-edged sword. So I need you to be aware of that. Once you open up that door, it's gonna be hard to close. So, the good news in all this though, if you wanna talk about me very quickly, is that I'm gonna compete. I'm gonna step on stage this time, actually make something out of that position. I'm not just gonna do it for social media. I'm gonna get down there with a secondary goal in mind, not just being shredded for the sake of it. And I know that I'm not gonna stay in that zone. And obviously, I'm still happy being a little bit heavier than that. That's not a problem. I guess I compare it to a former fat person who never wants to get fat again. It's kind of the same thing here, but in reverse. So that's it, guys. Those are my seven cutting lessons. I hope you related and learn a couple of things. Now, I want to hear your feedback in the comment section. Do you agree or disagree with some of my assertions? And what additional advice can you offer for those who are really struggling to lose that weight? Let me know, and I'll talk to you all next time.